Part of the background, if you hear any extra noise that is not related to this video, that's just because I'm doing a quick rapid refire. That made no sense. I'm just making a quick recap video and at the moment I don't exactly have a good time to actually film it so I'm just making do with what I've got right now. So okay, WWDC happened. We've got to watch the event. Yay! What changed? Let's get into it. So, after Craig and his other presenters have jumped from an airplane doing some skydiving and such, yeah, oh, they always do something interesting for the intro of WWDC, we start off with Tim Cook announcing TV Plus trailers. Why? After that weird uh, tangent that literally nobody asked for, we're going to move on to Vision OS 2. Yes, despite that we only have one Vision thing out, the Vision Pro, like how many people bought that and how many people actually care about that? Hmm, let me think, a grand total of Oh yeah! This many people? Last I checked. Because basically if you check the entire internet right now, nobody cares about this thing. Like after a month of people trying out Vision Pro, nobody's talking about it anymore. It's one of those easily forgotten products. And yet Apple's continuing to update the software for it, I guess. So what did they add to Vision OS 2? Well, Photos gets share play with personas. So you now can have other people creepily and uh, weirdly positioned in your room to react to photos. Supposedly there's navigation improvements. Uh, once again, they're still not intuitive as a touchscreen and such, so yeah, not entirely sure how that's gonna work. Supposedly the Mac display or preview, whatever they call it, I don't remember exactly what they call it. There's new display ratios or features for displaying your Mac in Vision Pro. Supposedly Canon's coming out with the camera lens that can do spatial video recording or spatial photo recording. I don't know what it is. What I do know is that don't care because quite literally none of this actually matters. 3D video, 3D photos, I, I I'm sorry, that's not the future. And they also have announced that Vision Pro is coming to a few more countries. What are they? I don't know, I don't care. Because truly, just as I thought when the Vision Pro was initially announced last year, I thought that this thing was going to sell great for the first month after it comes out and we were all gonna forget it because truly it solves no problems and your phone does things better. I, I can't think of a good reason to buy a VR headset. Vision Pro, I don't care how good it even is. I don't care how good the experience is. Why? I get it when you already have something that does it just fine. I don't, I'm confused about Vision Pro. I can't get excited for it. And clearly the rest of the internet agrees with me because who has talked about Vision Pro for any time past January? Or excuse me, it came up February. So who's been talking about the Vision Pro past February? Okay, maybe the podcast that I'm on, we talk about it every now and again, but <laughs> literally it's just because we got nothing else to talk about. And oh, I guess Vision Pro is coming out with this, Vision Pro is coming out with this, but truly, Nobody cares about this product except John Prosser. All right, moving on to the operating systems that do matter, however, we're gonna talk about iOS 18, which they have made a crap ton of changes. How many notes do I have here? So we got a new home screen where uh, now apps aren't completely locked to the top of the device. I don't think they're perfectly customizable where you can place each individual app exactly where you want on it. Not entirely sure how this works. I just, now we can place them not at the top of the device. Guess Android users who have hated Apple for not having this level of customization, uh, rejoice. Oh, speaking of app icons and such, you can add a little more customization to them. You can't completely replace the cover of the icon itself. You can't change the overall design. They basically made a whole bunch of color improvements where you initiate dark mode. Oh, you get a dark app icon. Or do you want a device theme color over your apps? Well, actually you can do that now too. Control Center has a redesign with new panels and a brand new library. On the lock screen, ah, I can't English. On the lock screen, you can now change the quick actions at the bottom to whatever you want. Oh yeah, and you can also lock apps and hide apps from people, I guess. Better privacy restrictions for those apps. iMessage now gets more tap backs. You can now schedule when you send a message. Uh, you get text effects and satellite compatibility. Mail, you now get better customization. Maps gets a little topographic. Wallet allows you to now pay strangers with Apple Cash. There's updates to the journal, a new dedicated game mode, and Finally, we finish up with a photos redesign with better filters and easier ways to find the photos that you want to find. In terms of home and video, that's their next category. AirPods now gets a function where you can nod yes or no to the voice assistant. I'm not saying it because then we're gonna trigger everyone's devices here. Better voice isolation supposedly and spatial audio gets a game mode, I guess? Okay. And jumping to the TV side of things, there's now a new feature in Apple TV called Insight where it will display a list of 
actors and the music. Nice, because that's actually something I've always been curious about whenever I watch shows or other movies. There's a new feature that, thank goodness this is finally here, because sometimes I can't figure out what the movie producers or directors were thinking when they do this, but sometimes it's a little hard to hear what the actor is saying over the loud sound effects or the background music. Sometimes it's a little difficult to hear what the voice actor is saying, and as a result, you need to turn on subtitles or do something extra. In my opinion, just make a better movie where you can actually hear what the actor's saying, but okay, well, now there's a feature that allows us to hear what the actor's actually saying in those noisy bits. Again, why can't these movie directors just make a better movie? Just asking. And I guess there's a new screensaver update where you can now display Snoopy. WatchOS 11 is next with a new training load calculator which basically measures your effort that you put into your training. Okay. Uh, you now have the ability to cheat on your goals. So say you get injured and you can't exactly, you know, complete uh, finishing your record for that monthly badge or something. Well, guess what? You can now cheat it. <laughs> What's the point of these again? <laughs> There's a new vitals app to give you a basic overview of your vitals, I guess. There's also some new cycle tracking updates. If you happen to be a woman, do not ask me to explain these to you because I am not a woman. I have no idea what any of this is and I do not care because I am not a woman. Go ask another woman if you want a better explanation. We get more widget updates. I don't care. I don't even use the widgets on watchOS at all. I don't even use the widgets on any of my devices. Quite literally, I don't use widgets. Oh, well, I, I guess we got widget updates. There's a new translate app and more watch faces. Still no third party ones. With iPad OS 18, don't worry everyone, it's time to get super hyped and super excited. Did the iPad Pros finally become iPad Pros? And is my M1 chip finally going to be taken advantage of in this iPad Air? Nope, still not fully professional, but they did make some meaningful changes that were long overdue. But to start, here's where we begin my list. New home screen personalization, basically the same as as iOS 18. There's a tab bar that takes your sidebar and puts it above your apps. A little confused about that, but okay. I, I guess there's that. SharePlay basically allows remote desktop functionality. So, okay, I guess we now have remote desktops available for iPads now, which is useful to some if you can even use your iPad professionally. And also, drum roll please, this is the most important update of them all. Literally, we have to sound the alarms and get everyone's attention for this. We finally have a calculator app. By the way, something hilarious in the event that itself. Here's a replay of the clip when Craig announces the calculator app for the iPad. Next, I want to talk about a feat that some may have concluded must be a mathematical impossibility. That's right, we're bringing calculator to iPad. Yeah! Oh, I don't know. Doesn't that yay sound like a bit of a frustrating, what took you so long kind of yay? I don't know, just saying. But yeah, there's a new calculator and it's actually pretty darn impressive, okay? If you're gonna be late, you might as well come in professionally late or is it fashionably late? I don't know, don't care. The point is this calculator app actually is pretty banger. Not only does it get a basic and scientific calculator app, but it also has the ability to show your calculator's history along with the uh, previous equations you typed in, something that actually the macOS calculator doesn't even have. I hope that macOS gets that at some point. But also they add some functionality with this calculator into notes and also in the calculator app itself. You need equations you need to solve for X or Y or Z or such like that. You got anything you need to solve? Well, guess what? All you have to do is write it in a note and there, you can now show your work and the calculator app will guarantee you you write the correct answer. This is how I've always suffered in math class. I'm smart at math, okay? It's just sometimes my brain and my hand just don't seem to communicate all that well. And every now and then, despite that I do the calculation correctly and get the correct answer, sometimes my hand will not write the correct answer. And as a result, I get the question wrong. So freaking annoying. That is actually very helpful. Not gonna lie. Still allows you to show your work and make sure you are guaranteed the correct answer, assuming that your work itself is actually 
correct. Thank you! Oh, this would have made math class so much easier for me. Oh, and I've been bringing this up a lot. If we do get a calculator for the iPad ever, which we finally did, could they give it graphing calculator functionality? Like, actually, there is a graphing calculator on the Mac. It's called Grapher. It's not the same thing as the calculator app. It's a separate app. But yeah, the Mac has a graphing calculator. Well, guess what? Not only does the Mac have a graphing calculator now, but this. So yeah, long overdue, but they came in fashionably late. And also we have a new smart script function that basically makes your handwriting a little more legible. And then we get on to Mac OS Sequoia, another creation of the crack marketing team. We get the same math notes functionality. That's what it's called, by the way. Continuity gets a new impressive feature with that basically allows you to mirror your iPhone onto your Mac. It allows you to control it. It allows you to browse notifications. It even allows drag and drop functionality. Not gonna lie, that actually sounds extremely useful. Good on you, Apple. Thanks for that feature. I probably use that a lot, not gonna lie. And then one thing that I've been asking for macOS for years, okay? I give Windows a ton of crap. You guys know how much I hate Windows, but one thing that I've preferred about Windows over macOS is just their window management. I've hated the way Mac macOS has managed their windows. When it comes to resizing, full screen, everything about it, I have never liked macOS's window controls. But we now have snapping. Yes, I actually use this feature all the time on my Dell XPS. Sadly, I still have to use Windows for work. It's just not my preferred platform for very obvious reasons. And now finally, we're getting an improvement to window management on the Mac. Thank you, Apple. This was literally the number one complaint I've had with macOS. Managing windows and all that and this is terrible. Thank you. We have a new presenter preview so that way when you're doing video conferencing stuff, you don't accidentally share things with the conference or whatever. Uh, yeah, there's a new presenter preview, I guess. And speaking of video conferencing and such, we now have backgrounds for video conferencing. So I guess maybe when I do the iTunes Fanboy podcast, I can finally get rid of the messy mess that is my room behind me. Keychain now has a dedicated passwords app. Safari gets a new highlights function, a new reader view and video viewer, I guess. And a gaming portal toolkit. Oh, wait, no, a second generation gaming portal toolkit. So I guess if you're a gamer who games on Mac, I guess you're getting a better experience or maybe you happen to be one of those many gazillion PC gamers out there who refuse to game on Mac primarily because as long as Macs don't have the ability to game, the Macs suck in general. Well, I don't know if you ask me if your computer can't even run a stable operating system. I think that's even worse if you ask me. <laughs> I guess Macs suck even less now because, well, I guess Ubisoft made a bunch of announcements and I guess they're bringing a lot more of their games over to Mac. Good for you. And then finally, the last subject of the matter that Apple brought up today is the AI bullshit. Oh, wait, wait, am I the only one calling it AI bullshit? Huh? Just, just, just me? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? This whole AI thing is really annoying to me. I've hated that everyone has caught on to this whole trend of AI being the next thing. And if your device does not have AI, then it is old, it is irrelevant. It doesn't even matter in today's society. Yeah, it's it's truly dumb. It's right up there with 5G, by the way. And so I guess the second half of this event was purely dedicated towards describing the new Apple intelligence. No, it's not artificial intelligence. It's Apple intelligence, to be honest. Despite Despite that, yeah, as unoriginal of a name as that sounds, I think it's a better name than artificial intelligence because anything is better than that. But still, we have Apple intelligence. It is described as powerful, intuitive, integrated, personal, and private. This is Apple intelligence. AI, ladies and gentlemen, or as I call it, BS. So what is this new Apple intelligence feature? Both the good parts of AI in general and the bad parts as well. The good parts, better research, something that I actually do appreciate about artificial intelligence, again, that's a bad name for it, is its ability to pull from a library of resources and get you much more information, especially when you don't know exactly what it is you're searching for. So yeah, that aspect of it is great. It is now more resourceful. That is one thing that I appreciate from AI in general. It's just more resourceful. But then there's the other part of AI, which is the bad part, and that's the general 
generative function. Personally, if you made me president today, I would make generative AI illegal because it can be used for so many nefarious purposes and can be so deceitful. I don't like the whole generative AI and that's not me speaking as a content creator. This is me speaking as a human being. I have a bad feeling that this will be very much misused and as a result, it can put people in harm's way or yeah, much, much worse things. So you guys complain about how scammers are getting good at their job and how their scams are becoming more and more realistic. Well, now thanks to generative AI, yeah, now their scams can become even, even more realistic. Not only does it have the good parts about AI being an even bigger and much more resourceful library, but it also now has the bad parts too, and it's the generative functions. And unfortunately, Apple went on a lot about describing their generative functions. And again, if you ask me, not as a content creator, I'm saying this because artists and content creators have been accused for disliking AI because it might take away their jobs or something like that. That's not why I dislike generative AI. The reason why I dislike generative AI is because I know it will be used for nefarious purposes because we're the human race. The human race is going to do the human race and abuse things, okay? That's just how the human race works. In my opinion, this generative AI stuff is too powerful to the point where I don't even think we should allow ourselves to have it simply because we can't respect it. But using this new Apple intelligence functionality, we now get a much deservedly revamped version of Siri. Oops, I said it. Sorry, everyone. And yeah, basically your Apple assistant is now better. Other than that, I pretty much zoned out around the rest of the entire thing because it's just all of this AI stuff really is just bad to keep investors happy. And as such, I don't think it's important. And because I don't think it's important, I'm not going to explain it to you because come on, when you talk to the rest of the tech community as well, a lot of us are going to agree about the fact that yeah, AI is not really all that exciting. Just so you guys know, the whole technology around artificial intelligence, it really isn't new. This technology has been <laughs> existed for so long. In fact, I use this old version of this technology in my daily workflows. So yeah, what is there to be impressed? I don't know. And as a result, uh, that's going to wrap up this uh, Apple event recap. WWDC, I was pretty excited about all the things that they had to announce when it comes to all of the operating system updates. iOS especially, I was very surprised by the iOS updates. And then finally, we've been needing a calculator on the iPad for so long. Finally, it's here. And I was actually very impressed about what they did. You're still going to lose points for being late, Apple. I'm still going to give you crap for that. But hey, you put a solid work and effort into the new calculator app. Credit where credit is due. And before I sign off on this video, I just want to announce that I actually now have finally, I don't know why it took me too long to decide to actually do this, but I have now officially launched a Patreon. I'm not going to bring this up that often, just so you guys know. I hate advertising stuff. As you guys know, I don't like asking for subscribers, but if you guys want to support me and the work that I do here on not only this channel, but all seven other channels of the Random Alpha Network as well, I now have a Patreon that you guys can use if you want to support my endeavors. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Do me a favor and interact with the stuff below. My name is Alpha Wolf, Random Alpha, signing out.